Hi everyone and welcome to my insurance lecture. Today I'm going to talk to you about policy structure. You'll pro you're probably going to get a few questions regarding how a policy is structured and what's included in certain sections of a policy. Now my goal when I do lectures is to make it easy for you to understand the concepts so I hope that this helps you. In this lecture, I'm going to go over how a policy is structured and what type of information is located in each section of a policy. I'll try to give you some examples on how it relates to home or dwelling. So my plugin, here's my plugin. If you go to my web page, you can view a 40 minute lecture on a dwelling policy for the low cost of 1225. I'm going to also add a homeowner soon. If you're interested in that, please click the link below. Now the first page that you'll find in a policy should be the declarations page. You'll get a question on the test that pertains to the first part of a policy and you need to know that it is the declarations page. In the declarations page, you're going to see the name of the insured, the location of the property that's being insured. So if it's a home, you're going to be, um, you're going to see the property's home address. If it's a vehicle, it's going to be the garaging address or where the vehicle is primarily located. And in most cases, it's going to be the home address. The declarations page will also include the policy premium. The premium is the amount the insured is paying for coverage. The declarations, the declarations page is also going to include the effective date. And the name insured that's listed on this page will also include the spouse if married. The definitions is going to state who is insured other than the name insured. Remember, the name insured would be listed on the declarations page. So as an example, in a homeowner's policy and the definitions of who is insured would include all resident relatives, including children. So anyone related to the name insured that reside in the home, brother, sister, aunts, uncles, etc. That means that if there was a fire in the home and your living sister's property was damaged, according to the definition of who is insured on a homeowner's policy, her items would be covered. Even though she's not listed as a name insured, her name may not even be on the policy, but she is a resident relative and the definitions state that resident relatives are included. The insuring agreement. So the insuring agreement will state the promises of the insurance company as well as any perils covered. What is covered under the policy? To find that out, check out your insuring agreement. What does the company agree to insure you for per the insurance contract? That's going to be in the insuring agreement. For example, on a dwelling policy, some perils that are covered in the insuring agreement would be fire and lightning. So the insuring agreement is more like the body. It's also known as the clause. This is where all your coverages are going to be. This is where most if you're looking to find out if something's covered, you're going to the insuring agreement. What, what does the insurance company promise that they are going to insure? The additional coverages section of a policy will indicate what's covered in addition to what's in the insuring agreement. It's kind of like buying a book at the bookstore and you get a free bookmark for your purchase or paying for a pedicure and in addition you also get a foot rub. So the insuring agreement of a homeowner's policy will include the perils that are covered which we talked about but in addition under the additional coverages section damage to trees shrubs and plants would be covered as long as it it's related to a covered peril such as fire. The conditions are going to apply to the insured and the insurer. It has to do with 
where the insured and the insurer's responsibilities lie. For example, the insured has to provide notice of loss or claim. Um, that is a condition in the policy. It's also a condition for the insured to protect the property from further damage if possible. Provisions in the policy take uh, coverages away from certain claims in the exclusion section. Perils can be excluded from a policy. Excluded means it's not included, it's not covered. For example, property insurance policies do not cover war. War is an exclusion in many policies. This means that if the property is damaged due to the peril of fire brought on by a war, there's no coverage. Even though fire is a covered peril, war is an exclusion, and the exclusion eliminates that coverage. An endorsement is something usually added to a policy to make the policy better. You can endorse things onto the policy to get more coverage. For example, a dwelling policy does not have liability coverage. But there is an endorsement that can be added called the Comprehensive Liability Endorsement. The insured would obviously pay more premium in order to endorse this coverage, but it would make a policy better. So you can endorse other coverages onto a certain policy to make it better. So the structure of a policy includes the declarations, definitions, insuring agreement, additional coverages, conditions, exclusions, and endorsements. If you have any questions, go ahead and just send me an email. I hope that, that you understood this well, and I hope that it helped. Again, my name is Rebecca, and I am your insurance lady.